Thank God for that. Amen. No, in the blood. Amen. Now we will have this morning's scripture being read by myself. Uh, we're going over to First Peter, second chapter, one through three, and then John six sixty through sixty nine. And it reads as such in First Peter: Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all gall, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. No one is good. And now the uh, John uh, 6 chapter 60 through 69. It reads as such, when many of the, his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the son of man ascending to where he was before. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is uh, useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would uh, betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is uh, granted by the Father. Because of this, this many of the disciples turned back long, uh, no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of the eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Amen, somebody. Word of God for the people of God and the church will say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
deceit, hypocrisy. There ain't no hypocrisy in the church. Envy and all evil speaking. <laughs> in the church? No. What kind of church did Peter go to? Lord have mercy. It sounds horrible. Peter said, lay aside. Watch the words that are coming out of your mouth. <laughs> and then desire like you a newborn baby. That, ever, that baby ever get hungry? <laughs> and when you tell that baby, could you wait a little while? How does your baby act? <laughs> she cries. It's like, no, Ma, you did not understand. I may not be able to talk English like you can, Mother, but I need to find a way to let you know I was hungry. But one thing about whether it's a baby or an adult, two things that's going to prevent you from being hungry. Number one, if you're sick. Your baby goes for a while without eating. That's going to be a red flag, isn't it? And then you're going to start wondering, well, it's been several hours. What's going on? And then you're going to start taking the temperature. You're going to start checking, are you OK? Because normally by this time, you are doing what? Crying for some food. The other thing that will prevent you from really being hungry is what? When you, you're already full, simple enough, and you need to wait a while. Anytime you, you ever been in that situation where you feel like you just got through eating and somebody's already inviting you for another meal. And the first thing you start doing is looking at your gut and wondering, okay, how long do I have to wait before I'm ready? So whether you are really ill, and it's, it's hard when you are sick. Many of us have maybe you've had the flu or bad cold, or you just, you have some kind of disease process going on, and everybody is saying, mom, you gotta eat something. Mom, you gotta eat something. And you're like, baby, I can't right now. And the thought of it makes me nauseous. I'm, I'm ill. Jesus said to his disciples, there's a lot of things that I want to say to you, but you can't bear them right now because you're not spiritually well enough. But when the Holy Ghost comes, I'm going to do something in you to make you well enough and strong enough to receive the word of God. But Peter is talking about this other thing. When he says, lay aside, I want you to think, empty yourselves. Before you can really be ready for the sincere milk of the word, you need to empty yourself of malice, of deceit, of hypocrisy, of envy, and stop all this talking, all these words, negativity that you have, ready, locked and loaded. Empty yourself of it. You wonder why somebody says that, oh man, I don't know how that came out. I, I mean, I just got emotional and all this came out. And I asked the question, you talking about it coming out, but why was it in there in the first place? So often we need to learn how to empty ourselves. God, you can't fill my cup because it's already full of stuff that is not of God. And God is saying, before you can even 
since that hunger for the word of God, we need to first empty ourselves and we say, God, help me to empty myself. But often we become like hoarders. You ever approach someone who was a hoarder and tried to get them to get rid of stuff? And they find a way of justifying every piece of garbage in the house. It could be rusty, it could be dusted, it could have no, when was the last time you even picked that thing up? That was one of, you remember one of Oprah's rules. She said, if I hadn't put my hands on it in about a year or two, that probably means I don't use it anymore. But with the hoarder mentality, I can see something and always find a reason to keep it. Because you never know, brother, when you might need it, right? And that's what evil people do. People who won't surrender their all to God will look at that envy and find a reason to keep it. They find, they look at that hypocrisy, all those negative words, they'll say, man, you never know when I might need it. Somebody may upset me one day. Somebody may talk about me, and I don't want to say Jesus wept or bless the Lord at all times. I want to use one of those words, so I got to keep it in my arsenal. Peter said so many people in the church are still doing that today. He was not talking to the world. He, Peter was talking to the church. And Peter, if you remember around the time of the crucifixion, Peter knows about using flowery language. Because the Bible says when they were cru was about to crucify Jesus, some little girl said, wasn't you one of them? And the Bible says that, G that Peter started using some flowery language with that little girl. Saying, I don't even know him. <laughs> <laughs> but where did that come up where he was able to use that even against a little child because it was in him and that is why when the rooster crowed and the bible says Jesus looked over at Peter Peter began to weep bitterly but see that sometimes is a holy moment for us, when we can really recognize how bad we are and how far we have departed from God. And often God needs to show us ourselves. And yes, it may cause us to weep bitterly, but sometimes those are cleansing tears where you can say, God, I admit I am messed up. I need your help. I need your spirit. Wash me, oh God. I can't be full of you because I'm so full of myself. And Peter said, lay aside these things. Empty yourselves of these things so that you can be hungry. Have that sense of hunger again. He says that you may grow thereby. When you fulfill yourselves with the word of God, you can begin to grow. And often with newborn babes, they begin to, you know, in the first few months, the doctors will kind of take measurements and see, are they growing along the spectrum? Or sometimes they, you know, they, they seem like by this time they will be here, but they're still here. Maybe we need to boost the calories a little bit. Maybe we need to help out a little bit more so that you go, because without growth, their whole organs and all their body needs nutrition. Amen. And Jesus said, when you are a newborn babe, we need nutrition. And often maybe a verse a week may, may not be enough for you. You are underdeveloped because you need more nutrition. So often when God shows you yourself, then just be like Peter. Okay, God, I messed up, I'm, but Lord, I need your help. And what I love about it after the resurrection, remember what Jesus said, go find the disciples and Peter. 
named him by name, even though you messed up, I still got a mission for you. I still got a job for you. You are not done yet, but I can use you when you get to the point where you do weep bitterly about your situation because those who humble themselves, I will exalt. And those who exalt themselves, I will humble. Jesus asked the disciples all these things that I'm saying to you. Does it offend you? Are you going to leave me too? Like all these other so-called disciples left me? He says, listen, the words that I'm speaking to you, these are not just philosophical exercises. These things that I'm saying to you are spirit and they are life. But the fact is, some of us have a digestion problem. Because it's one thing to put it in your mouth and swallow it. But, the, but can your body digest this thing? And what gives your spirit the ability to digest what you swallow is belief. Your faith. Faith takes the word of God and makes, turns it into something you can use. And he said, there are some of you who do not believe. He knew from the beginning those who did not believe. And then he said, because they did not believe, verse 66, from that time on, many of his disciples not many of his adversaries or detractors, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. So then he, went, he was down to his original 12. You know, sometimes you need to shake some folk off. Sometimes you got to let some folks go. It may hurt. It may offend you. It may feel bad. Sometimes, you know, especially in today's world where you're trying to get a thousand followers, a million followers, but then one day all of a sudden it went from a million down to a hundred. But Jesus looked at those who were left and said, now are you going to leave too? Peter said, where are we going to go? You do have the words of life, verse 69, but we have come to believe. They left because they didn't really believe in you. We are still here because we do, and that belief enabled them to digest the words that he was giving them and created life and spirit to them. But I want to transition to this part as we close. John 4, verses 31 through 34 says this. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Rabbi, you need to eat. But Jesus responded to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples was looking at one another and said, well, who brought him something to eat? And Jesus said, let me help you understand something. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. In the beginning, when we are spiritual babies, it's milk that he wants you to just drink, just read, just hear, just study, to learn. But mature Christians are not just about hearing the word and talking about it, Jesus said, what is meat to me right now is that I'm doing it and I am living this thing. James said it this way, you can show me your faith without your works. In other words, you keep talking about it, talking about it and talking about it, but I'm gonna show you my faith by my works. I am going to be, my life is going to be a demonstration of faith, preaching through demonstration. Jesus said, that gives me meat, that gives me food, that gives me strength. 
And that gives me the power that I need to live the Christian walk. I grow because of the word of God. But Jesus said, bless if you know these things, he said, blessed are you if you what? Do them. That's where the blessing is. It is a blessing to read. It is a blessing to hear. It is a blessing to understand. But your real life begins when you begin to live this thing. And he said, do it and also finish his work. Are you able to finish what you started? Are you able to finish? Because real growth means there's someone you can rely on. There's some jobs you don't really want daddy to start, do you? Come on, man, let's, let's keep it real. Baby, we don't need to call nobody. I'm going to fix that plumbing. I saw a YouTube video, and I know what I'm doing. And what do you do? You pull out your phone, and you got them on speed dial, and you talk and do it. No, he, he still think, um, <laughs> he, he still think he using that old language again for some reason, so I know he's getting upset. Uh, no, he's, he's asking me what that piece is for that he just pulled off. <laughs> Oh, okay, you're on your way. All right, thank you, Mr. Plummer. <laughs> There's some folks you don't want to start because you know they can't finish what they start. God is saying, without my spirit, you will never be able to finish what you start. You can clink under there all day long, but make sure you get Jesus on the main line so he can come and finish you, you really want to grow. I love you, said help you out. Uh -huh. <laughs> and see, that's the ego of a man, right? Okay, you need to help out, Lord, then you go ahead, see, show me what you can do. <laughs> While the precious wife who keeps us out of trouble is in the background saying, thank you for coming over. <laughs> God wants us to grow. But for spiritual nutrition for growth is learning his word, but getting to the point where we can do it and demonstrate it through the world. If we never, we do need to speak. We do need to use our words. But most of all, let our life be consistent with the gospel of Christ. Let them feel that this is good news. This is not just things that we were talking about, but we're living this thing and living it well. With everyone standing, we just want to have that moment that Peter had. As you look over your life, again, we're not speaking bad about one another. We're not using our words to hurt anybody else. We are just standing before Jesus and that rooster is crowing in our own ears. And Jesus wasn't looking at anybody else. Notice how the Bible does not say when that cock was crowing that Jesus was looking at all the other disciples. See, I told you. He didn't do that because Jesus does not humiliate us. He looked at Peter and said, Peter, now that you know, where do we go from here? Jesus is looking at us today and saying, now that the rooster is crowing in your life, where do we go from here? Do you run away in rebellion and embarrassment or do you just surrender and say, Lord, help me? I've been reading and hearing your word all my life, but now I need to believe so that I don't fall and I will live this thing. So yeah, that's how it starts. Just by saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Partially, yes. Completely, yes. My soul. My soul says, yes. And won't you tell them I love you? Do you really love me today? Don't tell me. <laughs>
Don't tell each other. Tell him. Born to the death of my soul, I love you, Lord. I really, really do. Now, Heavenly Father, as we have opened up our hearts to you, you have asked many different questions to each and every one of us. The answer to every one of us is simply yes. But what is the question? Some of us are saying, would you join the church? Yes, Lord. Will you receive my Holy Spirit? Yes, Lord. Will you begin to work for me? Yes, Lord. Will you surrender your family to me? Yes, Lord. Will you surrender your finances to me? Yes, Lord. Will you surrender your career ambitions to me? Yes, Lord. Father, help us to know what our yes is individually so that when we leave this place, we will walk in a new commitment for you. For that is your command to us in Jesus' name. If you're saying yes to the Lord now, just lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. Lift your hand and say, yes, Lord. I heard the call. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Seated. 
before we uh, close out today, are there any other announcements? Often um, someone says I meant to also clarify something or announce anything. Is there any, any other announcements? Yes. Okay. Trustees after service. Any other announcements? Yeah, you know, thank you for sharing the love. All right, and again, please keep uh, the family assistant over Robinson in, in your prayers. Any others? Okay, at this time, let us stand. Our acolytes are coming. said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us be like Abraham, who did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in his faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Let it be as if they were our testimonies. Let it be with us this day as we sing together. Thank you. 